kama wale wanajua I'm talking about hizo 1998 99 to 1000 kulikuwa na zile sacks ambazo zilikuwa zinaekwa majani tilis wakati zimetuniwa zinaekwa so kila mmoja me and my siblings kila mmoja alikuwa na yake moja moja so tulikuwa tunaingia ndani then tunaambiana good night tunapata na asubuhi ukipata na asubuhi that is ilikuwa tricky sana because hata viatu sisi hatu kujua mambo na viatu ati oh watu wanavaa viatu wakati baba alikuwa we used to wear shoes but when he died we buried him that was the end and it was a beginning of our now a new life that we did not even expect <laughs> My father passed on in 1998. He was a very rich guy. But you guys you know from where I come from eh mtu akikufa unasemaka hii mali yote ilikuwa ni yake. So relatives wanaenda na leo mali si Kenya taziko. So hapo ndo tuliingia katika umaskini. And uh, that is the life we've been living. Kama wale wanajua I'm talking about is on 1998 99 2000. 2000. Kulikuwa na zile sacks ambazo zilikuwa zinaekwa majani tilis wakati zimetuniwa zinaekwa so kila mmoja me and my siblings kila mmoja alikuwa na yake moja moja so tulikuwa tunaingia ndani then tunaambiana good night tunapata na asubuhi ukipata na asubuhi that is ilikuwa tricky sana because hata viatu sisi hatu kujua mambo na viatu ati oh watu wanavaa viatu wakati baba alikuwa we used to wear shoes but when he died we buried him that was the end and it was a beginning of our now a new life that we did not even expect but um hapo ndo tuliendelea so i schooled in a primary school called Shisesia primary up to class 6 wakati nifika class 6 there was one teacher who developed an enmity na mimi so i was not able to continue with the education so i dropped out of school one of my relative akaniambia kwa nini umekataa shule ni kama explain so he was like come and live with me so nikapata opportunity ya kuja Nairobi so nikaanza kuishi na yeye akinisomesha akinisomesha bado ilikuwa ni challenge because what he used to do he used to take me to school pay admission fee and maybe school fees for one month then that was it so after nikifukuzwa 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 he's like that school is not good i'll change you now he takes me to another school he pays admission and school fees for one two months na soma soma one term nafukuzwa ana nipeleka tena shule nyingine. So I school in about five schools in Nairobi. Uh, so wakati nilifika class 8 now he married. Again now that one he can a new life in my life. So atuko tunapatana na na ule bibi alikuwa ameoa. So it was tricky. There was a lot of fights, a lot of quarrels in the house. Hapo ndo mimi sikuwa ijua kama kuna kitu inaitwa lunch because hizo time unajua ulikuwa unaenda nyumbani kukula lunch ndio urudi shule so by the time nilikuwa narudi nyumbani that is when she is now like oh it is lunch time now she start cooking and aniambia ni washe jiko so me i was like okay sawa sitawasha jiko let me just go back to school because tulikuwa na only one hour and from my school to my place it was about 15 minutes walk kurudi ni 15 minutes walk so that is 30 so i only had 30 minutes to have lunch and go back to school so niko na mambo ikakuwa ngumu Now, ule nilikuwa naishi na yeye don't want to mention him because he's a close relative of mine. Uh, akanifanya ngoma. He used like to beat me every day, you know, kwa sababu tu ya mambo na nyumba na nini. But all in all Messi could give up. So niliendelea then ikafika time we were now to register for KCP. Then now I asked him, eh tunahitaji 300 shillings za ku register KCP. So hapo ndo vita ilianza. So akanipiga akaniambia hata nipewe pesa. Na kuongeza kwa hiyo hata kuwa amelipa school fees alikuwa amelipa tu tena kawaida yake tu school fees ya three, ya, two, ya two months. So tukaendelea so akaniambia hata nipatie akaniambia in fact hata ukimaliza I'm just worried kwa sababu you still go back to the village na uchungie watu ngombe. You know that hiyo ndio ilikuwa job by then ama you know you till on other people's land. So me I was just demoralized I even thought about like hanging myself because I was like eh hey, this life is tight you know i didn't have any other relative in nairobi that i would meet ni muambie what i'm going through so things was hard it was difficult kabisa but now i just moved on so i just opened myself to one of uh, 
the deputy headmaster in that school and I told him what I was going through. Lucky enough, he was a Christian and he was born again. So he asked me whether I'm born again. I told him no. So he prayed for me salvation and that is how I became born again. Then after that, he really supported me. He's the one even who paid my uh, KCP registration and he used to give me some money, you know, just in case you go home and you don't find food, you can buy yourself uh, a meal. By that time, I was going to go to the hospital and I was to surwa. Surwa, it is a mixture of beans, you know, mandazi and some cabbage. Na tuwaru kidogo. So that is what I used to do, that was my life. So I was going to go to the hospital, it was not expensive by the way, it was about 10 bob. So, okay, on a 20 bob, me, I was rich. So, that is how life was. So, when now I finished school, I was like, now, where am I going? So, I had to go back to the village because I, I will not live with him because he also had a family. So, I shifted to up country. He will open the way. It, it did not take long. God just opened the way. And I got a sponsorship from the United States of America. Uh, because I was a performer, I used to dance, I used to do a lot of uh, skits, acting. So those whites were kind of pender to. They were from an NGO called. The, there was an NGO in the states by then. It was supporting the orphans who have talents. So that is how they came in. Then I worked with them, and they asked me, "What do you want? Do you want like a job, or do you want to go to school?" Then I knew knowledge is power. So I told them, take me to school. So kwa sababu ya vitina pia tena kwa, kwa village, you know, they were like, no. Uyu kijana just take him to a local, vill local high school, you know. So I was taken to Mahoko Secondary School. Uh, by that time, those guys told me they only pay my school fees. But I was to sort myself shoes, uh, uniform, and all that, and transport. From my place to Mahoko, it's about uh, 30 minutes walk. So I used to walk morning, come back in the evening. I only had one shirt and one trouser. I used to wash my shirt on daily basis. The shirt was green, but after three months, it turned to be white. <laughs> so that is the life. So to the end layer, to the end layer. After one year, they came and evaluated me. Wakaona, nilikuwa a lot of improvement because despite the fact that I was a day scholar, I used to become, I was like number one in the whole from one stream and we had about six streams so they asked me if you can manage to be number one and yet you have borders and these scholars then you deserve something better i told them if you so wish they asked me can you look for one good school either provincial or national school i went to kakamega high school they denied me an opportunity then i got an opportunity at saint ignatius mukumo boys high school that is where i was admitted then i schooled there for three years then after that, I completed my KCSE. Then I came home, we waited for the results. The results were out. Then the person who had linked me to the whites, I don't know where he got the story. Then he wrote an email, he told those whites that, uh, unfortunately, this guy did not perform well in school. He stole the exam and he got an, I don't know, a why. So they were very mad at me. So I was writing them an email, they were not responding. I writing the, writing them emails, they were not responding. So me, I just trusted God that one day they'll come and know the truth. Na hapo ndo nilikubali kwamba sometimes lies zinaweza kimbia mbio. Lakini haiwezi fika mbele ya truth. Truth lazima ita overtake lies na truth itajionishana. So they came. Na wakakuwa meifanya siri sana. So nikiwa tu nyumbani, nikasikia mtu wamesema cloud chaos wamekuja. Oh, nikaambia Mungu umefungua njia. So, I woke up very early, I prepared myself. Then I went and met them. Then upon arrival, they just saw me and they were like, "What do you want from us now?" I told them, "Relax. You took me to high school all these four years. You cannot just leave me at this stage. But we have nothing to do with you. You did not pass. You saw the exams, you got a Y. I told them, "Where did you get that?" I did, that is the information we have and we have nothing to do with you. So I did not like justify myself. I just left them, I went back home. I collected all my certificates, all my result slips, and I came with them. Then I told them I don't want to de defend myself, have a look. 
this is what I got for the four years I was in Mukumo Boys, for the three years I was in Mukumo Boys. So they checked all the results and they were like, oh, we didn't know that. So now, that is now when God opened another door for me. Now I started dealing with them directly without now using the person who had linked me to them. So within a very short time, they asked me, uh, what would you like to do? Because I was very good at bird watching. I used to go to Kakamega Forest and I knew like all the species. And I liked the trees, you know, the fauna. I was very good at fauna. So I talked to them, I encouraged them. They used to work with me. Every time they come, they always put me as, a, as their tour guide. So they asked me, do you like, would you fancy working in a, a tour company? I told them, yes. If I get an opportunity, I don't mind. So that was the, another now channel. They connected me to a guy here. His name is David Wathiani, who really gave me a support. Uh, they gave me bus fare to come to Nairobi. Now I was coming to Nairobi as an individual, not going to my relative, but just to a friend of theirs. So I stayed with him. He asked me to go to Nairobi, look for a college. Then I went, I brought him three colleges. Then he told me this is expensive, this is expensive, go look at, for cheaper one. I did not give up. I just went to town and again, I got a cheaper, a cheaper uh, college, whereby I, uh, I pursued uh, tour guiding and administration. So he started giving me a lot of internship in his office. His company is called Pal Davis Adventures. So I used to go with the guests in the bush, Masai Mara, Amboseli, Savo, Samburu. And I, I just liked it. I liked the experience. Then after, in fact, I was to graduate after two years. But after one and two months, the teacher told me, I don't see what you're doing here. Why can't you just apply for exam? Then you just sit the exam and leave. Because you know everything. Because by that time I had a lot of exposure in the industry. So that is how I applied my, I applied, I paid for the exam, I sat my exam, and I passed, I got a, a distinction into a guiding and administration. So I immediately after that, this guy employed me. Then after he employed me, I worked with him for about uh, one year. Then immediately after that, I got another connection at a very big company, travel agency in Kenya. Now, I was being paid 10,000. Then from being paid 10,000, that is now how I upgraded to getting a salary of uh, 50,000 plus commissions. So I used to go home at about around 100,000, 150 thereabout. Then I worked with that agency for about four years. And I've, I've won a lot of certificates. I've been the best uh, top selling agents in different destinations. Talk of Mount Kenya region, talk of Thailand, Dubai, Mauritius, Seychelles, Bali. I was the best tour consultant in that, in that company. Number one, it's all about idea. Once you have idea, you can always work around it. So when I was in my previous employment, uh, I met a client. And that client posed a question to me one day. She told me, uh, David, what are you planning to do after this? Because you cannot live here for the rest of your life. Then I told her, I have a plan. If I happen to get money, I'll open my travel agency. Then she was like, like how much do you need? I told her about 500,000. Then she told me, okay. Then that was like kind of the end. Then I met a very good friend of mine. His name is Paul. I shared with Paul my ambition, my vision, and he really supported me. And he told me, yeah, that's a good idea. How can I help you? Then I discussed with him, I gave him the budget, and he told me now, this is what I can do to you. I can only give you this. Then he gave me a certain amount. Then uh, I went back to that client and I told him, I told that client now, I have this much. Can you top me up? Then yeah, she came on board. She gave me support. And that is now how I registered my company. I think we are highly favored by God. Because uh, even, when the terrorists attacked Dusit, we didn't like get any negative impact because all the safaris that we had confirmed 
still clients just made the arrangement and they came and they did their safari. But generally, when we, we face the terror attacks, you realize the industry suffers a lot because now clients will write you an email and they'll expect you to, gi to give them like a statement of exactly what happened. And you see, because you are not at the scene, it becomes a bit difficult. Then immediately after issuing a statement from your side of what happened, now you need to write them another email guaranteeing their safety. As you understand, it's a very, very, very tricky thing that you can do. So you realize by that time, you end up losing a lot of clients because now they are not, they are not sure whether their security will be, will be guaranteed, you know. So you realize uh, tourism sector loses a lot of money when such attacks happen in our country. Because like for us, we have a lot of clients, a lot of Kenyans who are traveling out of the country just on holiday, vacation. And especially during Easter period, you know, August holidays and December. They really travel out outside the country. And also locally, we are doing well. But uh, it's all about, I think Kenyans need more marketing so that they can be able to know the products that tour agencies are offering. Because there are still people who think holiday is very expensive. But you see, it's all about planning in advance. What I like about the whites, they can plan a holiday for three, in maybe three years. In three years time to come, they will travel to Kenya and do safari. But we Kenyans, we want just to wake up today and they're like, I want to go to Mauritius. Now, when you come to a travel agency, how much is it to go to Mauritius? I give, I tell you, one, uh, 150,000. You're like, oh no, that is very expensive. But you see, like for us, Crown Eagle Safaris, we have, uh, we have a payment plan that we are calling Lipa Pole Pole, whereby you can start paying Pole Pole, maybe for example, a package of 150, you'll be putting maybe like 20,000 per month. By December, you've already cleared that. that. So it's just your, your work to pack and travel. I love Masai Mara. Masai Mara is termed as the seven wonders of the world where wildebeest migration takes place. It is only in the Mara, nowhere else. And I like Masai Mara because Masai Mara is one national reserve that you can be guaranteed of seeing all the big five and like other national parks. That is what makes me love Masai Mara most. Because when I go to Masai Mara, I'm guaranteed of seeing all the animals. But you see like, compared to another park like Amboseli, Amboseli is not a guarantee. You're only guaranteed of elephants. Me, I love Louis, Louis you know? <laughs> that is where I come from, you know? Charity begins at home. I just love their culture more than any other, any other. I just love, we are natural. You know, we are just natural. That is what I like about ourselves. In tourism, it's all about service. And you realize that we are dealing with different clientele. There are those clients who, who are just calm, they'll come, they'll buy. There are those who will come, now we get pressure. They are like, no, can you give me cheaper? You say, come up. If you don't have that calling in the service industry, then utapata, utakasirikabure. And you might grow old within one year. But if you, are, you have a calling in the service, then you can venture in. And you realize that when you're working for yourself, you can always have targets that you want to meet. But when you're in employment, uh, you have limits. For example, you just know that your salary is 50,000 and that's it. But when you are an, an entrepreneur, you can even make up to a million for yourself. And again, when you're working for yourself, you tend to have more energy, meet people, learn a lot, and like, em, like impress, uh, not really impress, but you now value who you are. Because when you are in, a, in, in, a entrepreneur, in, in, a, in a entrepreneurship, you meet a lot of other people who have ventured in different businesses, and you get to learn a lot from them. But when you are in employment, you might not meet them. You'll only meet your boss and your colleagues. So you'll be just like, uh, you'll be rotating in one place. So you're like tethered. Uh, I believe in working with what you have. Because for me, my budget was 500,000 to set a travel agency. But I did not get that 500,000. I only got 100,000 and that's what I began with. 
So me, I can encourage all the young people to start with what they have. It does not matter how small you have or how much you have. But now your determination will make you now forge ahead. Because if you have, let us believe in a humble beginning. Because there are those people who had a lot of capital, but after like one, two, three, four months, they closed down. And there are those people who had a very little capital, and till today, they are still forging ahead. So it is all about what you have and the drive within you. For me, I'll prefer employing young people because they have energy, the zeal, the passion of working. But you realize the old people, they have seen a lot, so they might not be aggressive like young people. I want to believe that the uh, reason to why young people are learned and they are jobless, it is because they have set their target so high. Uh, a youth thinks that because I have a master, my starting salary should be 200,000. And you realize there are some other people who, who have done like a diploma and they are ready to be offered uh, a job at 50,000. So you realize most employers are going for people who have diplomas than those who have degrees and masters. So the only way to salvage that is um, it is good to it is good to not set your target so high but just work within the market range in business it's all about profit and loss there is no any other language you make a loss you make a profit so for me i've made some losses the biggest loss i made is um, one of my colleagues who i work with she did a quotation to a client she just called the hotel, confirmed availability at the hotel, and she was told, yes, the rooms are available. So she went ahead, she collected money from the clients. Now she sent the book in voucher. Uh, at the hotel, they have different categories. We have what we call standard room, we have superior room, we have uh, deluxe rooms, you know. She only confirmed availability, but she did not narrow down on which room category. So what we have is a standard room. The packages we are advertising are based on standard room. So she went ahead and she, she booked. Then upon receipt of the invoice, it was double what the client had paid. So, and you know, it was a last minute booking. So client was traveling like tomorrow and we are getting the invoice today. There is no way we will go to client and tell the client now, uh, we have a situation. We need you to add money. You know, it was not possible. So that is the worst that I ever had. That is the worst. So we had just to pay on behalf of the client. Then we thank God because now that client became a repeat client. And now she booked another trip to Dubai. And now that is how we recovered. Kuna mtu alimaliza high school na akakuja akaingia kwa travel industry. Ameka kwa for travel industry for five years. Na kuna mwingine alimaliza shule, eh, high school, akaenda university. Maybe akafanya masters in tourism studies. So what I realize how what we need, you cannot compare. So for me, experience ni muhimu sana. But for those youths who are like self motivated, you know, what wambao wana wana zataka kuanda mana kuni say idea like kuskuma my vision, then sit a mind kama hata wana experience, accountability self-responsible, trustworthiness, openness, and confidence. Those are the principles that make me work hard. I wake up at three in the morning. I have a one hour time to reconnect with my maker. Then at four, I'll go back and sleep. At five, I help my wife to prepare my kids for school. Then I go, rest for about another one hour. So I wake up at seven, prepare myself, and come to work. They are part of me, so, and they know what I do. So sometimes they pay me a visit in the office and they see what I do. So that one has enabled me 
to cooperate with them very well because now they know when I'm not in the house, I'm in church. If I'm not in church, I'm at my place of work. And you realize most of the time they all know. They always know. What I've done is I've been open to them because my kids asked me, how come you came late yesterday? You know, accountability. So I've just made them understand if I'm not here today, just know that I'm at work. If I'm not at work, our youth are desperate, that I might say. Because you realize, uh, I went to Malindi, I did Watamu, and I realized most youth there, they are not educated. So, wow, mara nyingi, bada kumaliza to high school, primary ama high school. Sana sana wanataka wafanya either ki Italiano, eh, ki Faransa, ama ki Jerumani. Then once wamefanya hivo, imeisha hivo. Like, I paid a visit to one family and I was very, very, very disappointed. Uh, kijana, uh, kijana hapo ni beach boy. Uh, kuna msichana kwa hiyo nyumba ni bar attendant. Baba anafanya kazi kwa hoteli kama swimming pool attendant. Mama ni waiter kwa hoteli. Ati hiyo nyumba wanalala na shifts. The, you know, the, the, the room itself, it's so small. Sasa, always lala water at the same time. Sasa, inabidi. Unona, sasa, mimi nilisikia tu nimekasirika, but nikasema, vijana wetu wangejua, education is power. Wangejituma wenyewe. Malindi kuna mashamba. Lakini vijana hawako ready to work hard. They are not ready to, like, to toil on those lands. Wanataka? zile vitu zimekamu easy na inakuwa ngumu so unapata sasa wao mara nyingi ma beach boy wanaenda kwa beach pale wanategea wakiona mama ameteremka pale kwa beach wana wanamconvince wanamuuzia shanga eh, wanamuuzia vinyasa hapo hapo ndio unapata sasa wanajipata katika hizo mitego they show them a lot of love baku unapata sasa vijana wetu i really doubt if it's falling in love me I don't know kwa sababu si huyo peke yake. Mimi naonanga kuna kuanga na kudanganyelewa kwingi sana kwa sababu ya dola. Utapata kijana atapatiwa like 100 dollar alafu ataona tu amefika. So unapata hiyo kitu imefanya vijana wengi cost wamekuwa lazy. Wao kazi yao ni kutegea. Wakati tu alista wajakuja unapata wamepotelea katika madawa za kulevi. Na hiyo ndio changamoto ambayo tuko nayo Kenya hii yetu. So vijana wamekataa kujituma. Ndiyo nimejipata kwa hiyo trap lakini nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu Mungu alinisaidia nikaoa mapema. So mara nyingi huwa nikiongea nasema mimi nimeoa na niko na watoto sasa kidogo hii inanisaidia. Na kamba ali kidogo na. Ukitaka ku venture into business. Don't venture in business with one mind that you want to make profit. Na jambo la pili ni kwamba usifanye kazi ama usitake ku venture into business kwa sababu anti yako anafanya hiyo biashara ama uncle yako anafanya hiyo biashara ama your neighbor anafanya hiyo biashara na akona pesa what works for them might not work for you always fuata instinct zako zinakuambia ni nini unaweza fanya vizuri then sana sana ukipata make sure that any business you are venturing in iko in line with the, your talent or what god gave you to do kwa sababu kila mtu ako na kitu ambacho Mungu alimpatia akaweza kufanya. So ni vizuri sana kwamba kabla hujavenja kwa biashara, u make sure ujue kwamba Mungu amekufanya, ameku, amekutengeneza like ufanye nini. Then from there now think about that business. Is it in line with your talent? If yes, then go for it. Na hautawahi shindwa. You will always be a victor. Then kitu kingine youth lazima mkubali lazima mkubali principles za kukua ego in your life. An ego flies against the wind. It does not matter vile wind itakuwa mzito lakini lazima a fly against the wind. Then utaleta another thing ni kwamba when an ego iko kule juu ikikuja chini inakuanga na target. Na target yake sio ikikuja chini imis kifaranga lazima ikikuja irudi na hiyo kifaranga juu. So that should be the should be like what will yenye tatu propel kuingia to the next level. Kwa sababu mtafika mahali, you will try this business, itaka 1, 2, 3, 4 months, bado haifanyi. Don't abort that business. Endelea kuipamu, kuisukuma to the next level. Because patience 
na kukua self motivated itakusaidia kufika mahali unataka in life kitu ambacho watu wengi wajui wananiulizaga tunakuona kwa radio tunakuona kwa tv tunakuona wapi kwani wewe unakuanga nini ningependa tu kuambia wala ambao wanijui ama wale wanaona wanajua na wajui ni kwamba apart from kukua katika service industry eh, Mungu ameni ameniita and I also do his work I'm a minister eh, I'm a teacher of the word apart from uh, being a teacher of the word bado mimi ni nakuanga katika kikundi cha wanasifa na kuabudu apart from working for myself I also work for my creator so nikilipo huko kwenye nafanya kazi pia Mungu anani reward and uh, na hiyo ndio naweza sema kwamba hiyo ndio kitu imenisaidia kuweza kufika mahali nimefika it is just by the grace of god uh, at leisure time i'm always with my boy in swimming pool tukiogelea then uh, kama siko na kijana of course niko na my better half etu tukiongea tukijadiliana challenges ambazo tunaona unajua sisi uh, atujanza kukati tunajiishi tunaishi maisha yetu peke yetu bado tunaishi na neighbors and we see the challenges they go through so tunajaribu ngu kukaa naye pamoja na mwambie eh unaona 1 2 3 4 huyu anapitia hivi tunaweza msaidia aje tumtoe kwa katika hii level tumweke level lingine na unapata inatusaidia so that pia sisi tusi fall katika your trap because nakumbuka incidents zingine december ilikuwa 20th na kukakuwa na a lot of quarrels in our neighbor So mama alikuwa anasema kwamba leo ni 22nd na tutajapata nguo ya Christmas. Na mimi wakati nisikia story sasa ikabidi pia mimi sasa niingie ni kwa gari ni toke kwa, kwa bomo kwa sababu pia mimi naweza ulizo swali na sikuwa nimefanya hii. Sasa nikasema acha nihepe kidogo <laughs> kwa sababu niliona hii taleta shida. So I left. So baadaye ndio nikakuja nikamwambia mama sasa tufanye hivi let's go for dinner. Ndio and listen to discuss your story huko nimwambia sasa in, in the event kwamba kuna kitu 1 2 3 4 huyu mjamaa hajafanya how do you handle that so kidogo ikanisaidia tukasolve hiyo na mimi sasa sikuulizwa na tukarudi tukasaidia pia hiyo couple